はい。So here we are, wanting to celebrate ten years of the the, firm, the Perma Fund group being together, which is great.、Um, so I think it's really good to look at the history of the formation of Perma Fund, where it came out of, how it all started. Um, to so tell a little bit of a story, and I guess it's my story, and it goes back to the、um, to the origin story right at the beginning. 1978,、uh, Permaculture One comes out. It was the first kind of launching of permaculture to the world, and the two originators after that publication went their separate ways.、Uh, David went up to Jackie's Marsh, a little isolated place in Tasmania, and started building a you know a, a house and food gardens. He, he wanted to trial what they'd just published. Um, Bill Mollison went to、um, to Melbourne and started doing designs for people, for friends and stuff for free,、um, and、um, kind of and revisiting them, see, seeing how they were going. So, they, but they did separate their, their their different ways. And then down the track, you have Mollison seeing the future of permaculture needing to be spread by word of mouth through teaching, through the seventy two hour design course. So he developed the manual. That became the curriculum to deliver permaculture education in this format of seventy-two hours, and back then it was done kind of in ten, twelve days straight, and that's how that was the beginning of the movement. But an important character that over、uh, that gets overlooked a lot in that story、uh, was Terry White, and what Terry did was start the Permaculture International Journal, a magazine. It came out in the late nineteen seventies. And he kept contact names. So Bill was out there doing all these courses and doing the course. Okay, see you later. You know, go out there and do things. But Terry actually type brought it together into、uh, a group of people that were able to connect through this magazine all around the world. Wherever Bill travelled, he'd pick up students, and you know they'd get the PIJ and their contact name would get into the journal. So that's how we communicated right at the beginning through this journal. So Terry White ran that voluntarily. You know, like he did that. On his own, pretty much,、um, no no money, and Bill ended up calling him permaculture's only saint. He felt that highly of him. So often we say, you know, Bill Mollison is the is the father of permaculture, the movement. That's true. Without Bill's initial, you know, movement in that space, we wouldn't have a movement. But we also wouldn't have have one if it wasn't collated. And so Pet- Terry White produced this magazine that connected the global permaculture movement. And so Terry ran that for a long time, until it、uh, he, he got tired of it, and I totally understand why.、Uh, Robin Francis then took it up. So Robin was working in Sydney at the time, at the epicentre,、um, getting a you know pretty solid group together, and、um, she was asked to take on the editor's role of the PIJ, which she did, and then she eventually moved up to、uh, Nimbin, to、uh, Bungjung Garden. So she took the the journal to her.、Um, Um, to Lismore, I guess where, where it operated for a long, long time with Robin Francis as as the editor. And at some point in that, you know, in that story,、um, Mollison had set up the Permaculture Institute、uh, to promote permaculture and get projects overseas happening as a as, as a kind of a, a structure. And and Robin, with others at that time, really wanted an association that was grassroots in ownership. That you know、uh, the advancement of permaculture in Australia should be grassroots in ownership. So her, along with a group groups of other people, and done, you know, unfortunately, I don't know all their names, so apologies for anyone I've, I've missed here.、Um, they joined, they formed an association called Permaculture International Limited, that was a, a company by guarantee in structure, and they took on the running of the journal. And so, so this new structure took on the ownership and running of the Permaculture International Journal, and so they kind of bubbled on for, on for you know quite some time and did very well, and the publication rose in prominence, and it was a fantastic thing to get. You know, it was that was was the only main thing that was connecting us this this magazine. So it was the、um, social media of the time. It was the social media of the time. It, yeah, yeah, it was really critical.、Yeah. Then GST came. The gov- federal government at the time, liberal government, put on the GST, GST, and financially it couldn't continue. It folded. It linked up a little bit with another magazine that was similar,、uh, Green Connections,、um, in、uh, in Victoria had started, and they kept some aspects of the journal alive, 
uh, but then again it folded as well. So, but Permaculture International Limited still kept going but with nothing to do. What are we going to do? So more years went by wondering what to do. At one point they did a fantastic thing and started initiated accredited permaculture training, a a APT. So uh, permaculturists gathered and for a moment in time put together this um, a vocational package that could be taught in TAFEs and schools and places like that. So that was one good thing that they really did well in that interim. The only thing that really unites us as a movement in this country are, are convergences. Um, just sort of gatherings for people that have done PDCs to come together, usually every two years, and connect. Um, not, not to necessarily make decisions as a conference, but to share stories, tell people what you're doing and share it and say, hey, I live here and I've done this and it's worked, have a go yourself. So they were great. There's a lot of energy there and they were good things to do. But they did lapse for a while. Uh, we didn't have them for quite some period in that, in that period where Bill was kind of reorganising. Um, so one came up in the early 2000s in Melbourne, which was the first one for quite some time. And I attended that, it was my first convergence in Australia. Um, and it was great, it was really interesting. But what I also found interesting was the division there, the division by the delegates about, you know, there were some in David's camp and some in Bill's camp and there were city people and there were country people and they were all fighting. They were all kind of having these dramas and stuff like that. And um, it was where what became known as the Amigo Troika formed. Uh, two good, f really good friends of mine, Bruce Zell, who lives up in Cairns, and Ian Lillington, who lives down in Victoria. We met at that convergence and uh, formed a really good friendship and mateship. And uh, had this, and it was really good because Ian had really close contacts with David, and uh, Bruce had really strong contacts with Bill and Jeff Lawton. And so we, we thought we might be able to um, have a dialogue and a conversation that might assist some dialogue between the camps because there wasn't much. There, was, there wasn't much discussion between uh, Bill and what Jeff were doing or what David was doing. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that, uh, <clears throat> mainly because David stayed very much where he lived with Sue Dennett and people around there knew what he was doing because that's where he worked. Um, and so there was a bit of ignorance, I guess, from people up north or from that fraternity, that lineage, that didn't quite understand the volume of work Holmgren had contributed over the time to the permaculture story. So it was interesting, and it was, it was out of ignorance that you know, th these divisions occurred. And so the Amigo tri Troika formed conversations on the phone for a long period of time, saying, hey, how about we get them and them together and have a discussion there? Um, and, um, and then we kind of talked a lot about leadership, where, you know, permaculture really had this charismatic leader for a long time, Bill, who was just fantastic. And once he kind of stepped down, um, there was no one, no one was going to replace him. And we wondered, well, what does leadership in the future look like? Um, so I had, had a lot of discussions there. Um, and then two years later, the Sydney convergence happened. Um, mid 2000s and I got heavily involved there. The, the key people there were, were um, Penny Pyatt who was the president and her partner Geoffrey, um, what's his name again, Geoffrey Hawker and so um, yeah they were also, I mean Permaculture North had a, had a membership base of over three four hundred, it was the power group in Australia. Penny, Penny ran it you know really well organised, had groups, it was powering, you know, three, four hundred members. Uh, it was bigger than PIL. It was bigger than, you know, so-called national body. It was bigger than that. So um, she felt, you know, that there were, needed to be a peak body that would take on the role of um, progressing permaculture throughout Australia. And they put, put forward a model, I guess, that, that could do that. And so we talked about it at the end of the Sydney Convergence that, you know, look, we need a peak body and, um, you know, we, we we're going to move forward. And um, so, yeah, that, that became a discussion point from point within the movement to progress this, this idea of having a, a peak body. So um, the Amigo Troika kept on talking and said, this is good, you know, well, what does a peak body look like? You know, so the Permaculture North model kind of... Um, came out as a cooperative model 
you know, from the grassroots groups down to the state groups to a group with all, all kind of linking in a, in a cooperative model. And then there were people um, still in PIL, Permaculture International Limited, who said, well, just change the name. Just, we've already got an association. Let's just go from PIL to PA, to Permaculture Australia. We've already got one. Why, why double up? And stuff like that. Now, that caused a, a few concerns, say, from within Permaculture North about that. You know, simply um, taking on that role and, and who are you anyway? You know? <laughs> So, yeah, there was a bit of um, argy-bargy kind of there. So we had two models on the table. The Amigo Troikas did an interesting thing. We put out a survey to the membership um, looking at, well, do you want a peak body and what do you want that peak body to do? So it's, that, that, um, that survey is still out there in public domain and anyone could look at it. It was well, I think, well over five 600 people replied to it. So it was a quite, a, quite a good overall look at what permaculture people out there at that time were thinking about that. Now the overwhelming thing that came out of that that survey was the fact that they wanted a peak body to be a voice for permaculture at national level debate on environmental issues. Um, so they wanted kind of lobbying, they wanted advocacy to be the main role and leadership to have a voice out there. And um, so that so that became really prominent. So um, we go to the next convergence in Brisbane sometime later, 2010, and the Amigo Troikas were giving, uh, given a lot of space, almost a whole afternoon on that agenda to discuss this topic. And uh, I, I was given the role of chairing that meeting uh, in Brisbane. And um, yeah, I was, I was, because Bruce was part of the organising committee, I guess, in Cairns, uh, we were able to get that space to, to look at it. So basically, I went to Brisbane um, to have this meeting, and there were two models available. And I suggested that permaculture really needs to take on that ownership of the word sustainability that was creeping into the vocabulary at that time, that we own that word. We have a pretty clear understanding of what sustainability is about. Why aren't we out there with that voice? So I was backing what the movement was saying they wanted. And I agreed with that. I, I thought that was what a peak body should be doing, was advocating for change at a top-down level. Um, and so we started the debate. I offered the opportunity for both of these models, the one from Permaculture North and the Pill to PA model, to address the gathering. And they did, and they did it really forcefully, with really strong language, and they upset a lot of people. Now, a lot of this goes down to the background um, of say Geoffrey Hawker, giving that Geoffrey comes from, he's an academic in the political science field, um, and he's a labour unionist man. You know that's that's kind of his his background. So when he talks to the public, he talks pretty strongly, like you would at a union meeting. Yet the audience were lovely permies who didn't like getting yelled at <laughs> or spoken to like that quite harshly. And then Robin Francis came out uh, out in attack of it, and. Robin was pretty forceful, you know, so suddenly I had this room of really angry people. You had a lot of people upset, you know, there was noise and I said, right, let's stop this, you know, and so that, that's the end of the discussion. And it was, it was a mess by the end of the day and I was heartbroken. I thought, what are we going to do now? Ro Morrow that evening tried to negotiate in a meeting to try and get the parties to talk together and come up with some resolution. We had a nice civil, so all the protagonists got around a circle that night and we had a nice discussion. Nothing too much was resolved, but at least we, you know, sitting down and talking about it. And so next morning, I didn't sleep well that night. Next morning thinking, what's, what's going to happen? I was given time again to readdress this first thing in the morning. And I was sitting there in the, I remember at the Steiner School there, and uh, in the middle of the playground and uh, this bubbly Robin Clayfield had arrived. She was a day late. I thought, oh, thank Christ. She knows what to do. She's a people person. She can facilitate anything. And then the wonderful Rabina McCurdy from New Zealand were also there. So I had the two, it was interesting, you talk about the skills within the movement. I had the two best facilitators in the social sphere of permaculture at my beck and call. So I explained to Robin and, and, um, and Robin the, the problem. And they said, no worries, John, we'll do a hot potato, 
we'll do a well cafe and we'll do a, a body a body vote right they got it worked out great let them go so they devised this so we started the morning with a very powerful apology from penny pyatt at right at the beginning saying she's sorry that this happened yesterday and and that um you know she does believe in the cooperative model and hope we can move that way and then robin came out with a okay so who wants to design the peak body and we got into groups and we had butcher's paper flying and you know what what should a peak, who wants a peak body who what should a peak body do and so you had all these people you know bubbling around tables and just writing down all this stuff of what they want a peak body to do it was great and then uh, they also led another activity where they got people to vote you know do you want to with your body you know so we all went into a snake pattern and they said well do you want a peak body and the majority of people there said they did so we kind of left Brisbane not with a model but with a, a indication from the the movement that they yes they do want a peak body so that's kind of where it ended now after that the permaculture north group kind of fell away Penny and um, Jeffrey and others got pretty burnt by that experience and and kind of stepped away from permaculture north and you know they did a move to another part of on the Hawkesbury there at, at Bunduzia and set up an education center there uh, they put a lot of energy in, into that group and it kind of felt they reached the stage um, permaculture international limited held an AGM shortly after the convergence in Brisbane and um, for some because I was kind of on the cooperative model side you know I knew Penny and Jeffrey well and I liked what they were thinking so I was quite happy if Phil just dissolved and another entity started no, no big deal you know but you know, I ended up at the, on, the, on the phone at the AGM because I was a member of Phil and I got elected to uh, the board you know there's, someone nominated me and no one asked me well John are you accepting the nomination I kind of I forgot to I forgot to say that and suddenly I'm on the board and um, so that's where uh, kind of the net not too many meetings after that a motion was put that Permaculture International Limited change its name uh, to a trading name of Permaculture Australia and it was approved and that's how we have Permaculture Australia.